Okay, any questions? So for the last lecture, I still have one more, the standby mode, which uh, uh, we can elaborate more. So what is the meaning of standby mode? So this is the logic, okay? You see that it has the so-called virtual VDD. This virtual VDD is not the real VDD, but it's connected by a very huge capacitor, a huge transistor. Okay, so when you want it to sleep, you will make this into high and then cut this off, okay? Right, if you're in the standby mode, if you, you are in the standby mode, right, you cut it off, then there's no VDD, then there will be no leakage. Okay, and then you cut off the transistor. But this is not good enough. If you want the leakage to be even small, because there's still leakage, the leakage can go from sleep and to here, right? There's still leakage because the transistor is not a mechanical switch that you just cut off the power, right? So you can even put the sleep in both pull up and pull down network. Then you have even better effect. And that is, uh, you have the stacking effect. That is one thing. Right, and not just stacking effect, it also has the uh, body effect. Think about the source here is at lower potential than the body. This one gives body effect. It further increase the absolute value of the trestle voltage and thus reduce the leakage. Is this okay? Right. So you see standby mode is very easy. All we are doing is just to add a switch across the circuit. It's nothing new, right? But the problem is how do you add a, a transistor across it? You really want to have a very small R on because the, virt the virtual VDD, is equal to R on, I mean, the real VDD minus R on times the current. The current can be very large because you don't want to put a switch for every inverter. You have a switch for the whole block. The whole block consume a lot of current. Right? So if your R on is large, so-called large may be actually very small, but because the current is large, you are not getting the VDD 1.2 volt. You may get 1.1 volt. Then your, mar your Molloy's margin will reduce substantially. But at the same time, you want to make the R off large so that you can cut off when you turn it off, right? So you need high VTH and small area. So this is a trade-off, right? between the R on and R off, right? Ideally, you want, want to make this zero, but it's impossible, <clears throat> okay? And also it can become a source of noise. Any question about this one? Now there is one thing, you might not happy with this. Maybe the current leakage is still too high. We can use something called super cut off. So what does it mean? That is actually very simple. <clears throat> For example, you can have the signal here, and this is VD. This is VDD, right? And this is a block. So how do we cut it off? We make this one to VDD plus, let's say one volt, when we try to cut it off. Okay, look, look that this is the sleep device. So can someone tell me why this is called super cut off? When I put the gate to 
if it is at VDD, right? If I put a gate at VDD, this one is already off. Why do I put it at VDD plus one volt? Because you want to make sure the PMOS is off. Um, because when it's high, the PMOS is going to be off. Yeah. But already off, right? But what we can, what I'm trying to fish for is the current, leakage current is even smaller. So I hope that at this stage, you will be able to relate this one to the IDVG curve. We spend so much time on device, right? Uh, I hope you can appreciate what we are looking for. We're looking at the IV curve. I try to correlate this to the circuit. How does it look like if you draw the current? This is VG equals zero, VGS. It means VG equal to VDD, right? So when the difference is zero, let me draw this as SG, okay? This is the leakage current. Right, but if I make the gate equal to VDD minus uh, plus one, here VG equal to VDD plus one, that means VSG equals to negative one. Do you see the leakage? Right, so I can reduce the leakage by many orders of magnitude by making it in the super cutoff region, not just off, but even more off. And that can reduce the leakage power. Make sense? Right, so this class, I hope after this class, when you see a circuit, you do not only think about the circuit, you will be able to see there is a transistor and you will see the capacitance and you will see the body reverse bias junction. And so when you increase the voltage, you will also see that the current is still going down. Okay, you are no longer the undergraduate student who assume the transistor is completely off when it is less than VTH, right? This curve I mentioned many times also tested in the midterm, why? I keep doing this because this is so important. This is the essence for device physics and also the essence of this class for you to understand the link, linkage between the circuit and the device. That's why I want you to understand. If anything not clear, really, I hope that you, you can ask. And that distinguishes you from other people. I can say that. Any questions? If no more, then we are done with this.